Nothing, nothing makes headlines like a murder. From New York's infamous preppy murder to the heinous crimes of serial killers like Jeffrey Dahmer and the Hillside Strangler. Today's show is all about front page murders. My first guest is the authority on murder among the wealthy and the powerful. His books, we've all read them, they've all been fabulous. His newest book is called A Season in Purgatory. It's a real page turner. It's a thinly disguised account of an un unsolved murder, but not unforgotten murder. Please welcome Dominic Dunn. <laughs> Now you're going to have to do what now? You're going to have I'm, a Vanity Fair to cover? To cover the um, Menendez trial. Right. These Those are, are the two boys. These two rich, privileged boys from Beverly Hills, not druggies, handsome, one at Princeton, one at UCLA. Tennis pros. Tennis, thing, not pros, but, but tennis, great tennis yeah. players, one seated. And uh, he, they shot and killed their parents with 12-gauge shotguns, just in the face, nothing left of their parents' face. And uh, Allegedly. Allegedly, allegedly, yeah, allegedly be, yes. Yeah. But they were not arrested for seven months. Why not? See, that to me makes well, no sense. Well, I mean, sense. it was such a terrible crime that the police for quite some time thought that the uh, mafia had uh, uh, done it. And one of the boys confessed to a, a psychologist, and the psychologist taped the confession. But he also had his mistress listening at the door, and she heard it. And then it was she who went to the police and said, you know, this case, it was the boys who did it and they bought the guns in San Diego and they, and based on that, the arrest was made. And isn't, isn't that absolutely proof positive then? Well, I would think so, but then there's this big thing. The, the, these boys have been in jail waiting trial for yes. three years. Yes. And that is because the, the, the California Supreme Court has had to make the ruling on whether that tape, the confessional tape, is eligible or not. The ruling has finally come through, Joan, and it is so complicated, I still don't understand if they can use it or not use isn't it. Isn't that insane? Yeah. That's a, well, I think you're just wonderful. I love always speaking to you. The book... <laughs> I think it's absolutely impossible to talk about murders in Beverly Hills without discussing the murder of Kitty and Jose Menendez. The two sons, as you know, were charged with killing them to collect a $14 million inheritance. Joining us now is a friend of the Menendez family. She is an actress and model and is currently producing a movie based on her account of the crime. Please welcome Karen Lamb. How nice to have you on. Thank you. you were a very good friend of Kitty's. What did she tell you right before? all this happened about what was going on with the boys um she told me approximately six weeks prior to the murders that there were some goings on around the house that were that were leading her to not even know her own sons not know the boys exactly and uh that there was a lot of there were she was having a lot of problems mainly with lyle um she loved eric she always kind of you know eric was the baby eric was the baby focused a lot on eric that's why it was so hard for me to believe that Eric would ever pull the trigger. Um, Who allegedly pulled the trigger? Lyle. 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 Now, we have a shot. And of, Eric. And Eric. Did, too. We have a, a piece of uh, a, a clip here, a piece of tape showing, uh, I believe it's Lyle at the trial, saying that they were, uh, well, we'll see. Hey, right there. Did you cry? Yes. Did you bleed? Yes. Were you scared? Very. Did you ask him not to? Yes. How did you ask him not to? I just told him. I don't... I don't... <laughs> now, that's where he's on the stand saying that he was uh, molested by his father. You don't believe this? I like to cast him as Lyle Menendez. He's so good of an actor. Why do you say this? Tell me why. Because there's no way, there's no way somebody who's a six foot two strapping hunk of a guy, a week prior to, now he's not the one who was supposedly being molested at this particular time. It was Eric at the, a week prior, right. was being molested by supposedly the Jose. But look, you spend, three and a half years in prison, you're going to come up with something. This, this came out of nowhere. 
I just don't, I don't, I don't buy it. I don't believe it. I never have. The father was a womanizer, wasn't he? Completely. This son, his son, Lyle, hit on me at, at, at the wake. The boys hit he, on you? He went right into Jose's shoe and hit on me, came on to me. So these are not boys you feel that were molested <laughs> by the father? No, I do not. What do you think their, their motive was? I think they hated their father, and I think that they wanted control of their life. What about the mother? Why would they kill the mother? I think that's where the, I think that's where money comes into play. Because, because, with her still alive, the boys would not have control of the money. That's my thought. Why aren't you testifying? Because I'm, right now, I don't know how many of you are watching the case. I watch uh, what is it? A uh, court TV, and you you watch and you see this and you see this and you think, my goodness, what a terrible family. You, you don't think they could have been molested by their father? No. No, there's not even a thought in my mind. The reason I'm not testifying is because for three months, I would come into my home. Les Solar, who is a detective who broke the case, would get phone calls from me. I was hysterical. I would get phone calls after I'd walk into my house telling me who I was out with. Five minutes after I'd walk into my home, that phone would ring, and they'd say, Bill or Gary in a whisper and tell me who I was out with. So you feel you were being followed and harassed? I was being harassed and okay. I had traps in my line and Ugh. I had a lot of problems. Now we have on the phone, who you know very well, Dominic Dunn, yes. who is covering the trial out there. Dominic? Hello, Joan. And you're covering the trial now for Vanity Fair, right? I know you did one yeah. wonderful article on it already in this month's issue and you're going to uh, continue writing on this, this case. No, I sure am. Do you believe a Lyle uh, Menendez's testimony? Uh, I believe this much of it. Uh, I believe he was certainly psychologically and physically abused by his father. I believe he truly hated his father. I think his father was a very uh, was a man to be hated, uh, etc. Do I believe in the sexual abuse? I am having a very hard time with the sexual abuse I have from the uh, beginning, Joan. Why? Uh, you know, I, I think when, when, the, when, the, when a guy goes to a psychologist and talks about all the burglaries he has uh, 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 committed and talks about the murders that he did in graphic detail but happens to fail to mention that his father had sexually abused him, I, you know, I find this very, very difficult. What's the absolute latest now going on today at the trial? Well, I tell you, this is a really important day. He, uh, by the way, uh, Lyle Menendez on the stand has been a very, very good witness for himself. I mean, really good and uh, so forth. I, I, I believed him less each day, but an incredibly damning thing came up um, uh, uh, yesterday. It, it is uh, a prosecution information that the defense beat them to the thing and um, uh, presented in order to take the sting out of it. But what he did is, uh, Lyle, while in jail, he tried to bribe, with a great deal of money, his girlfriend to take the stand and say that uh, she had, had been sexually molested by his father, Jose. The girl would not do it, broke off their uh, uh, relationship. This is very, very damning. I mean, if he was truly sexually um, uh, molested, why would he try to talk his girlfriend and offer her money to say that she had been? Yes. And this is now a, 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 a Pamela Bazanich, the um, uh, a prosecutor, a brilliant young woman, is, um, uh, starts with the cross-examination at 9 o'clock this morning. May I ask you, because you and I both work so hard uh, for victims' causes. Yes, and, uh, we do. Their, their dance is on New York, and they miss you very much because it's a good charity affair. How do you feel about these blame the victim defenses now? You know, people will commit a crime, and they'll turn around. And I'm believe me, anyone that molests a child, I think... Mm -hmm. Is, is the most heinous crime of all. But, I mean, everyone is dead, and right away you go right to it where they beat me or they hit me or they slap me. Is this a, a trend now? Well, this is, seems to be the uh, uh, defense of the 90s. If it is true, it is, I agree with you, the worst crime of all. But why have, did they wait over three years before they happened to mention this? Yeah. I just, you know, I'm having a very hard time. What do you think, or you can tell yet, that uh, do you feel the jury feels this way? Can you tell anything by looking at them? Yeah, I tell you, you, it's very hard with this jury because there's two juries, which means there's 36 jurors in that um, uh, courtroom. So, and, 
So I just zero in on a, on a, uh, a couple of them. I felt on one day, uh, you know, Lyle twice has said since he's been on the stand, oh, I'm sick today, I can't go on, and the, and the judge says, well, tell me how, uh, you know, what it is you feel, and he says, I'm woozy. Well, that sounds like a rich kid that doesn't want to take the examination. Yeah. You understand? It wants the teacher to excuse him. And I saw two jurors look at each other and roll their eyes. Well, I thank you so much. I, I miss you tonight at the victim's dinner, but I, I'm glad you're out there and a pleasure talking with you. Okay, thank Joan. You. Thank you, darling. Thank and Karen, I thank you so much again, because I know that you're nervous and you think uh, you're being, you know, harassed by all this. I have been, but it's, I, I feel it's, I, I feel a little safer. Well, these thank days. you for coming on. And Please. you're going to be doing a movie on this now. I'm doing a miniseries for our. Great, great. I look forward to seeing it. Thank you. And thank you. More in a moment. Stay with us. Okay, the Menendez murder case. You all know what we're talking about, right? I don't know why, but me and my little Linda Stacy are obsessed with this case. I don't mean to make fun of it. I am, too. I watch I, I court TV all I the time. I can't get my eyes off it. Now, you know, the, the, the poor parents were killed watching a sitcom, which is horrible, but I found that they're, they're making what a movie. What sitcom? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? That's a, that's a terrible joke. So now, <laughs> so now there's a movie coming out on CBS called, I think CBS, called Deadly Games, and uh, they're, film, they're casting the parts. Now, I love this Lyle Menendez. I don't love him, but he, I'm infatuated with him because this kid wears a toupee and he's 25. Now, to me, I've never seen murderers with toupees and it's killing me. I don't know what it is. Yeah. It, it just sits there a certain <laughs> way. So now they, they're casting the movie. Now, they've got big names, you know, Jason Gedrick and C. Thomas Howell and even Ashley Hamilton, Shannon's new husband. But wait, the two brothers that might get the role as the murdering brothers are Fred Savage from Wonder Years and Doogie Howser, Neil Patrick Harris. <laughs> Now, you know, you, these guys have to be brooding, intense, killers, mean-spirited. They're looking for Kevin Arnold and Doogie Howser to kill their parents. It's just not going to happen. It's ridiculous. But now, if the boys have lent their name, they have to pay the boys to do the script. Well, so they're not going to come across bad. You're going to watch it with Doogie Howser and Kevin Arnold killing their parents? It's ridiculous. I can't imagine this being good. I mean, who's going to play the father? You know, uh... I, Art Carney, who are they going to get? <laughs> Does it, what are they looking for, a sitcom or a real murder story? There's plenty of mean guys out there. Put some people in that are 25 years old. And by the way, the one thing they have to have, nobody that's up for the roles has a toupee. And I demand, you know, no rug, no deal. If you, if you got a toupee, you get the part. I'll go along with I that. I see that. Now, will you stay to the end of the show and come sure, back? We'll absolutely. talk maybe about Stephanie Seymour. Oh, good topic, sure. Good topic.